Dave in Seattle. Hey, Dave, what's up? Hey, um, you know, I want uh, conservative viewpoints, you know, debated on liberal universities. But now that the alt-right has become a kind of a lot of uh, online bullies like Yiannopoulos and Cernovich and stuff like that, I don't think it's wrong for a venue like Berkeley to say to a Yiannopoulos, well, look, we're not going to invite you here to come and insult our students and cause a riot. Right. But I'm I'm very torn. I don't know I don't know what the call is on this because, you know, I think as progressives we're we're very much pro debate. Mm -hmm. yeah, so and and pretty... part of the problem is you get there are uh, Alexander Rubinstein did a piece uh, over at Medium.com on this a uh, couple yesterday or the day before uh, about this guy who is a professional right wing disruptor, and he shows up at events that are theoretically conservative events. You know like an Ann Coulter kind of event or a Theonopolis or whatever his name is event, and positions himself physically with the left-wing protesters and then becomes, uh, you know, overly aggressive or even violent. And then the left-wing protesters get labeled as the people who provoked the violence, and, you know, the thing gets shut down and the lefties get blamed for it when they were just, you know, peacefully protesting. And uh, it's a strategy that the right has employed that I remember the right... And, and frankly, uh, undercover police officers using in the 1960s against us in SDS. And I know that they were used against, against uh, you know, people like my friend Joe Madison in the civil rights movement. So uh, this, is, this is, you know, it, it's got to make it really difficult if you're in a university environment. It sounds like you're a professor, Dave, um, to say, okay, if we're going to have one of these hyper-inflammatory, you know, uh, right-wing ideologues on, are they going to bring with, or for that matter, you know, uh, I, I, although I don't think that there's any hyper-inflammatory left-wing ideologues out there. I mean, Bernie Sanders saying expand Social Security, that, that, that's kind of a different thing, you know. Um, but if you're going to have the, 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 the Ann Coulters of the world come in and what comes along with them are these hard right, uh, ready-to-use violence or close-to-it agitators, it becomes real problematic. I don't, I don't have an easy solution for it, Dave. Absolutely. And I think I think that, you know, people on the right wing, I mean, obviously, if you can't have a mosque in New York City, because that would be insulting to the 9-11 victims, you're not exactly, per, you know, protecting the First Amendment. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. I don't really have a lot of sympathy. And it's not as if Ann Coulter doesn't have a stage. At the same time, now it's a provocation. And so every right wing nutcase is going to beg to be on Berkeley campus. Right. You know. Yep. Yep. So. And then, and, right. and, and, you know, and part of the DNA of the hard right is violence. I mean, we've seen this. We saw this with Mussolini. We saw this with Stalin. We saw this with, with uh, Hitler. We saw this with, uh, you know, uh, Pinochet. We saw, I, you pick your right-wing movement. And, we say, and we've seen it here in the United States as well. Dave, well said. Thanks for the call. Suzanne in uh, Santa Rosa, California. Hey, Suzanne. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. What's up? Suzanne? In Santa Rosa, California? Let me just get you off speaker. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about the uh, demonstrations, that were, the pro what's happening in, with demonstrations around the country. Mm -hmm. that, for instance, in Berkeley, when the Yiannopoulos fellow showed up, all these people in, in black suddenly uh, got into the crowd, into the students. Right. And someone, I think, I can't remember who the personality was that was there. Robert Reich. Uh, Yes. He said right. they were all, and, you know, kind of pumped up guys who looked like mi military. He said they were militaristic. And I have a theory. I think these are Eric Prince guys. I truly believe they were so organized and they were so mercenary. Uh, you know, they seemed like mercenaries to, to Robert Reich. And yeah. um, I truly believe that this could have something to do with Eric Prince. And the whole purpose, of course, is to delegitimize the protesters right. and the students are saying we don't know who these guys are what they need to do is turn on those guys and get their masks off and get pictures of them yeah so they can the problem is a lot of them are you know large muscular violent men right and so it's going to be hard to get the balaclavas off their heads but you know if you surround one of those guys you can at least get that done and get a picture of them and and we can start seeing who these people are and if it's the same guys that are showing up you know at protests you notice they didn't show up at the Women's March. That wouldn't have worked out so well. John Doe in Washington, D.C.? Uh, seriously? Oh, hey, Tom. How are you doing? I'm well. What's up, John? 
Well, I just wanted to comment about the uh, person who called in and was speaking about the uh, black bloc tactics and Antifa uh, that have, uh, that's been uh, in the media recently. Um, <clears throat> Now, this isn't an endorsement, and I'm, you know, I wasn't calling just to debate the tactics or anything like that. I, you know, I, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but I do, I do have a lot of knowledge about, um, you know, the anarchist movement and uh, more militant socialist movements in the United States. And generally, the infiltration that comes into, say, Antifa, Black, um, that stuff comes from the state and the police. Um, the reason why those militant anti-fascists mask up and things is because of repression from the state and from just things like doxing by the hard right. I mean, there is a militant hard right that you know wants to see um, you know the radical left um, you know march guillotines. Yeah. Um, but and 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 I, I I encourage people to see what Black Bloc and things like that does as as a, a just just a different tactic, they may not agree with it, um, but these people see they, they're defending their communities from the real threat of fascism. And in, in the town I grew up in, um, a homeless man of color was beat to death by fascists. You're not going to talk them out of beating you to death. These guys are are serious, yeah. and and it's and and you may not agree with the tactics. That's okay, but. Um, don't don't work against them. Um, you know, do your own thing. Do your own, you know, engage in your own tactics. The, the, I mean, if you think about it like this. I mean, Antifa has been around since the 30s. You know, it's not a new thing. Um, and, and think about without Black Bloc in the 99 protests for IMF and WTO, the average person would have no idea of the horrible things that WTO and, and IMF engage in. You know, I, I've heard. Uh, yeah, I I I don't. I, I, I don't altogether disagree with that, uh, let's say, media analysis. Um, yeah. I, I, I refer you, since you're here in D.C., to a, a brilliant piece Alex Rubenstein wrote, uh, or maybe it's Rubenstein, R-U-B-I-N-S-T-E-I-N, over at uh, medium.com, and it's titled Anatomy of an Anti-War Riot. And um, what he's pointing out, and he's actually identified the guy and outed him, that there are basically right-wing infiltrators. Now, I acknowledge oh, yeah. that there are mm -hmm. there are left-wing folks in the black bloc who are you know who are true believers. I I knew these you know same people in the '60s and SDS who went off to become the Weather Underground. Oh yeah. You know, and then we're just convinced, hey, it's gone so far that violence is the only thing that's going to save us. And uh, you know, there's there's a time when you've got to go to war. And yeah. I, you know, I never agreed with that in the '60s, but you know, I understood it, and I, and I, and I, yeah. and I knew the people, and That's what I'm and and I know that there are, you know, well-intentioned people who are doing that, but there's also right wingers who are infiltrating these movements and 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 jacking them up. And I saw that again back in the '60s. I saw that with the SDS, and oh, yeah. and when and, we and were finally able to right. sue and get the get the police uh, files from the red squads at Michigan uh, at the in, from the Michigan State Police. Um, it was the it was the police infiltrators who were often calling for the violence. Exactly, yeah, you're, you're 100 percent right, it, and it, it it's about it's it's between pull and tell pro from the state, and it is the right. There is a lot of infiltration, but I just I I, I just don't want people to discredit the entire thing and think of them as an enemy. Um, the entire, you know, anarchist movement or militant socialist movement, whatever. I, you know, it, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a good idea to discredit that entire thing because it, just because you don't agree with the tactics doesn't mean that those people aren't your allies in some way. I, I don't know. That's really all I. I just don't. I just don't want people to think the. Entire I understand, thing, and you know? I don't agree with the tactics. I think that the tactics yeah. are counterproductive, and I realize that they get publicity. But is it is it necessarily good publicity? For example. You know, I was. We sat here. I watched out the window because it was a block and a half away. Where the, you know, during the women's march, when the, when there was a, a couple of dozen, or no, it was during the inauguration, where a couple of dozen people were running down the street smashing windows. I mean, that, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, literally a block from here, we we saw the smoke, we saw the police, we saw the the guys running down the street and being chased by the cops. I don't see that as productive. I don't see where anything good came out of that. And I and I uh, you know. On the other hand, you're right. This, this, I think about Seattle, that, that if those protests hadn't happened the way they had, the whole world wouldn't have been paying attention. 
Um, but on the other hand, maybe not. I mean, maybe there maybe there would have been a, a better way, or maybe it would have taken. But I, I just, you know, it's not my path. I guess I have to say that. Yeah, I think what you're yeah. saying is, you know, don't trash everybody's path. You know, I, uh, I, 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 I think we both said pretty much everything we have to say. John, I'm going to move along. Thanks a lot for the call.